Hello and welcome to Indie Designer Journal episode 18. We are 18 strong episodes into this series uh, where we are discussing different aspects of design and looking at all sorts of uh, independent games and getting ideas from them. Today we're going to do something, um, I, every episode I say we're doing something a little bit different, but in this episode we are doing something a little bit different. Um, I am actually struggling, I'm at sort of a crossroads with the adventure mechanics in underquest so if you've been following along with these videos uh, back in video 14 episode 14 i should say um, we discussed a potential system to utilize for um, adventuring in underquest that was fairly similar to that of what was used in um, iron helm except that there was three cards involved and a little, it was a little bit different. Um, but prior to that, I had attempted to make a system that was more similar to that of what, which, which I used in Tin Helm, which was quite a bit different. And since that last video, I've been doing a lot of play testing, messing around with it. I've come to the realization that using three cards is just um, not necessary. Um, as I'm playing it, I'm realizing after um, many, many sessions that uh, two cards is enough to, to give that player the choice that I'm looking for. Having three cards, the, the, the push to, to three cards didn't happen enough or it didn't seem relevant enough um, to actually um, push me in that direction. So I want to potentially scale it back to a draw two, choose one mechanic, similar to something that was utilized in Iron Helm, or sort of a um, hybrid system that was utilized in Tin Helm. So we're going to actually flip this camera around. I'm gonna show you my crazy designer notebook. And you can see kind of where my head's at and what I'm really looking for here. Now, I'm honestly looking for feedback. Um, I believe the majority of the people watching these videos, or at least half or so, are designers themselves, or people who are just avid gamers that, are, that have a lot of good ideas. So I'm going to show you what I have, and I'm going to be asking you for what, um, I'm basically be asking you for your feedback, um, solutions, uh, which direction you want me to go, because I'm sort of leaning in two different directions, and if you're a designer or a human being, um, there's often times we find ourselves at a crossroad and we start doing those uh, checklists and trying to figure out which which uh, direction we want to go and I'm sort of at that point right now I have my combat system pretty well um, figured out I've done a lot of testing on that and I'm very happy with where that's at um, but the actual exploration portion which is sort of the heart um, in many aspects to what underquest will be is not resolved yet and until I can get a foothold onto the direction I want to go with it, um, I'm sort of going to be in limbo. So I'm sort of pleading with <laughs> my audience now to sort of push me in the direction that I need to go in here. So let's turn this camera around, take a look at what I have, and hopefully we can come up with a solution together. Thank you. Okay, welcome to the inside of my brain. So this has been um, the notebook I've been utilizing for working on UnderQuest for a good year now. And there's quite a bit of stuff in here, as you can see. I go back and forth, I change my thoughts, change my ideas, I'm sure. Everyone has, um, who's a designer or has ran into this before. And this is where I'm at. So I have a couple pages here I wanna show you. This is the system that's more uh, closely aligned to that that is found inside of Tin Helm. This is just an example of what a card could potentially look like, just basic layout, having the um, title of a location, some sort of illustration. But essentially, you're looking at these two icons. So you'll have a couple of different types of icons. You'll have enemies, you'll have treasures, you'll have um, random encounters, you'll have quest encounters, you'll have um, camps, and you'll have treasures and traps, if I didn't mention that. So there's six different things, icons that could potentially show up here. Um, you'll draw, this will be the, the top card of the deck, you'll draw it, you reveal it, 
you'll look at it and you'll see what's going to be in that room. You'll know, okay, this room is going to have an enemy and it's going to have a treasure. But you don't know exactly which enemy it's going to be or which treasure it's going to be. You'll get that information by drawing the next card, but you have to make a decision at this point. Do you want to resolve this particular card? If you do want to um, resolve the first card, you will draw the second card, the next card in the deck, reveal it, and you will look at these icons down below, and they will tell you what um, the icons on the first card are. So the second card will tell you what enemy you're fighting and what is in the treasure chest. It's a pretty unique system. I used it in Tin Helm, had quite a bit of success with it. Um, some of the issues with it that I find through play testing is it's quite random, a little more, slightly more random than I would like it to be. Also, Tin Helm loses a little bit of that um, energy or tension that you get in Iron Helm because in Iron Helm, when you resolve the first card, and you'll see this in, in the next example, but when you draw the first card, and if it's a, a combat and you resolve it, it's a little bit easier. But if you draw that exact same card as the second card, the combat's a little bit more difficult. So there's a little bit of pressure luck. Now, on the flip side, treasures and positive things are typically better if they're drawn on the second card. You kind of lose that here, but I have a remedy for that because that's what we do as designers. We keep... Um, you know, basically going at it over and over and over again until we figure something out. So in addition to what you would have in Tin Helm, because this is very similar to what you have in Tin Helm, except in Tin Helm, you had the information on the back side of each card. So the front side or the face of the card would have just the two icons and an illustration. And then in the back side, it would have a little chart that showed the different possible icons and the outcomes associated with them. We won't get exactly into that, but I think you have an idea of how this works. You have a couple of icons. If you want to resolve the first card, you take another card, you flip it, and the icons on the bottom of that card will tell you what these icons are on this card. Um, on the, uh, alternatively, you could decide, I want to skip the first card. I, I'm terrified of it for whatever reason you don't want to resolve it then you would see these icons down here and you'd have a good indication as to what could potentially happen in that second card so then you would draw that second card and then you would have to resolve the two icons on that second card using the information known from the first card so that's one of the things i really did enjoy about tin helm is the more you played the game the more you recognized what icons are on each card and you can kind of you get better at the game it's a game you can learn to get better at the more you play however it did lose that sort of the second card um being worse or better or the disadvantages of drawing that second card so the solution to that that i have found and I've, I've tested it a few times is adding some text on the card that if the card is the second card being resolved that text comes into play so if this was the first card i drew and it had a enemy and a treasure chest and i decided i wanted to resolve it i would simply draw the next card look at the icons on it and those i would resolve both of these icons based on the information on the second card and i would ignore this text However, if I decided the opposite to not go in that first room, I would draw the second card. I would have to resolve those icons on the second card using the information from the first card, but I would read this text here if it was the second card I re was resolving, and it would tell me things like the uh, enemy gets the upper hand and gets to attack first automatically, or the enemy is uh, um, stronger than you first uh, thought and it has extra hit, hit points or things along that that line so negative things like traps and treasure i'm sorry um traps and enemies would be worse if resolved on the second card just like an iron helm but uh, good things like um random encounters and, and treasures would be better on the second card so if you were to resolve the second card and maybe it was a card that had a treasure icon and a random encounter icon on it you would refer to this and and take care of those take care of those um resolve them accordingly but you would read the text on there and it might say something like you can adjust the value 
of your random encounter because there's a system for the random encounters. I don't know if I'll get exactly into that, but essentially there is a different letters and the um, lower the letter, the worse the encounter and then the higher the letter, the better the encounter. So you would be able to potentially adjust that to get a better encounter if it was a second card. And treasures would simply maybe add um, different things um, that would add value to the treasure, like um, maybe you get an extra trinket or more ingredients or maybe potentially more loot, period. So this was a, a sort of a hybrid system. I'm kind of excited about it, um, but I'm not exactly sure if that's the direction I want to go with it. So on the flip side, let's take a look at the other alternative. So this is, um, we'll call this the Tin Helm version. Um, and I'd like to get your thoughts on that. And then let's take a look at the next version. And this is a much um, sort of simplified version of what I had shown you in uh, episode 14. Um, the difference here being is now there's only two cards. And I'm sorry, there's only... Uh, two cards potentially being pulled instead of three. If you watch that episode, you'll see that I basically had an Iron Helm-like um, mechanic for um, driving the adventure, but it used three cards. You would draw three cards and, and then reveal as many as you wanted or felt comfortable revealing. Um, how this system works, and I'm very excited about this one as well, so this is where it becomes difficult for me. Um, if you draw, let's say, look at this top line is, is a particular card. So if you drew this card, it would say, uh, if it's the first card you drew, you would have to face enemy number two, and you'd have to deal with a trap number three. We'll get more into what that means um, in future episodes, but let's just let you know the lower the number, the better. And if you were to resolve this card as the second card, the enemy goes from a number two enemy to a number six enemy, and the trap goes from a three to a five. So this system has a built-in, the second card is always worse when it's um, negative things. So enemies and traps are worse on the second card. And that's something that this other system addressed by using this text. This system would be simply icons. So the second card, you drew, if you drew the same card as the second card, it's worse than drawing it as the first card. Um, in this system, you would not use both cards all the time. So it would be more like Iron Helm and Desolate in that if you resolve the card on its front side, or the, if, you, if you resolve the first card, um, you never, you don't look at the second card. You just, just discard it. You don't need the second card to give you information like this other system um, requires. So you could easily just say, okay, I'll resolve this card, I'll resolve this card you'll never get to look at whatever the second card is um and then it's very similar to the other system things like tra i'm sorry like treasures and um random encounters they are better um, if you get them on a second card than they are if you resolve them on as a first card so very similar to what you saw in iron helm except this system instead of having you just draw a random enemy you'll have specific enemies for specific dungeons specific traps um, for specific dungeons so you can really um, i could really make campaigns and stories and quests that have different unique feels like it have all undead enemies in a particular dungeon or, or or anything like that cultists or however i wanted each dungeon to feel i could uh have certain traps and things along those um, lines and especially i could do something with these these quest icons which would trigger quest um encounters or events and that's very similar to what's in the other one so both both systems utilize pretty much the same things it's just how it is being um, um, actually the mechanical end of it. So the other thing the system does that the other system doesn't do is that I use this icon system that I talked about in episode 14. So in addition to the information on the card, there will be an icon, uh, chalice for a quest, a coin for a trinket, a mushroom for food, uh, an herb or some sort of plant for um, ingredients and then this little um, hourglass to sh represent time passing which burns some of your torch um, so if you draw the first card so i draw this card i'll see that there's a chalice so as bad as this card is i might want to attempt to actually resolve it in or actually i might want to pass on it um, in hopes that the next card that I get might have a chalice as well because that would mean I would get to actually and after I resolve the icons I would be able to 
get a quest activated or I could get um, a trinket or food or if you if you basically if you decide to go to the second card and you reveal both cards if the icons on both the cards match you get you trigger whatever that happens to be so you could get a new another ingredient or you could get another trinket or things of that nature so this is the second system it's more in line with what you saw in episode 14 so if you I haven't seen episode 14 I would it'd be awesome if you could go back to Take a look at that really quick to get your heads wrapped around exactly how this works to so actually play through with some play testing cards and you can see how this system works the only difference is that this system uses the new system that i'm looking at here only uses two cards instead of three because like i said i don't feel three cards is necessary it wasn't a gimmicky thing i was just trying to change things a little bit and seeing if i extended that tension of flipping cards if that would create more tension in the actual game and it really didn't pay off and, and i don't see a need for it so these are the two systems that i'm kind of down to right now for adventuring i'm also open to other ideas within this realm so if, if you've played tin helm and you've played iron helm you'll have a general idea of what i'm kind of looking at here and i would love your feedback to see what direction you feel the game of the under quest should go so i thank you very much for um, stopping by please subscribe and as like i mentioned please leave comments if you look i always um, answer all the uh, questions that are posed to the best of my ability and i just love the to the the go the back and forth and the ideas that i have been getting from you kind folks so thank you very much until next time take care